Discipline is correction or punishment which makes a positive contribution to one's growth in righteousness. While punishment is a part of discipline, it is a very positive term. Discipline is not a curse word. It's a positive term. Have you ever seen people undisciplined? Okay, okay. Y'all not with me yet. Let me help you. You ever been to the store and 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 you got your children and you told them if you touch anything, you touch anything you can't buy. Your behind is mine. Have you ever told them that? But then, then, here's another family come in and the children knocking stuff down. First thing you say, oh, I, I don't need nothing but about 10 minutes with that little rascal. Watch this. But when yours do it, you go right into action. Amen. You're not trying to harm your child, you're teaching. Amen. You're teaching. You're training. Amen. You're correcting. Why all these things when our God start trying to correct us, we offended? Amen? Amen. While punishment is a part of discipline, we must remember that discipline is a very positive term. Moses said to Israel, know then in your heart that as a man discipline his son, so the Lord your God discipline you. That's Deuteronomy 8 and 5. As a man discipline his son. See, if you don't discipline your son, <laughs> when your son get a certain age, he may discipline you. <laughs> so it's best to do your job. <laughs> so they won't turn around and whoop you. Yes. Are y'all right? Yes. So the Lord God Discipline you. Say you. you. And, me. and me. Nobody exempt from this. Amen. The New Testament makes the point even more strongly. The Lord disciplines those he loves. And the reason you jump after your child when you see him do it because you love him. You love her. You don't want them to get to an age where the police have to discipline them. You want to do your job. Are, are you all right? That don't mean they won't take no wrong turns or whatever. But if you do your job, guess what? God know how to get them back. If you train up a child in the way that he should go, when he older, he will not depart from it. Why y'all understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about children, but when I break it back down to how God is dealing with you and me, To this day, I'm almost getting old enough to understand what my parents meant. I'm almost. I'm not quite sir. Yeah. But they used to whoop me and then says, uh, this hurt me more it hurt you. than it hurt you. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> that was my mentality when they were saying that. I don't understand that. Even when I had to get a hope to mine three. 
children. I still wasn't feeling that. I, I felt the belly. <laughs> but now I'm getting a belly. Like no wine, baby. Now I'm getting more mature. I kind of understand. I kind of understand what they were saying. And that's what makes me understand now that they're grown, I look at the one that try to go God way, I look at the one trying to go their way, and, and I trust God with both of them, but it kind of made me think that I put the hammer down enough on one of them. Which I did. But I can imagine my father saying the same thing about <coughs> me. All right. Because after we get a certain age, it's almost like they didn't teach us. None. But they taught us, but our performance, our choices, our way that we go, act like they didn't teach us not that they didn't teach us, we just didn't get it. Okay, let me rephrase that. Y'all didn't like that. We just wasn't applying it. But can I tell you something? If you keep on living, you're going to find out the instruction that mama and daddy was giving us was for our good. For our good. Now I'm talking about a natural mother and daddy that have a part of God in them, but they're not God. God is the creator of all. Can I tell y'all a little bit about God before I go into this? God is... The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is there. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return unto the Lord. Because even though I'm preaching this, your head is running in all types of their direction. Direction. But let me tell you about God. God is a God that no one has to sustain him. God said, listen here, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. You know why he said that? He said, because the earth is mine. A cattle on a thousand hill is mine. That's what God said. God don't have to give none of our opinion to make the next move he want to make. He don't have to have no committee meeting. He don't have to have no family meeting. He don't have to have no church meeting. I'm God. And beside me, there is no other. When there was nothing, I stepped out and said, let there be life. All of my own image. I formed you from the dust, but you are nothing but a dead corpse. But I. <laughs> and you became a living soul. I hold the next breath that you breathe. Do you, do you think it? It pays for us to listen to somebody like that? Yes. yes. And so what I'm tell, trying to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God is disciplining us through our circumstances and our situations, not to hurt us, but he's trying to perfect holiness in us because he is a holy God and without holiness shall no man see the Lord. I don't care how much you say you love him. If you ain't set apart and consecrated to be used 
Are you alright? Yes. See, you got to watch this thing because you don't understand church folk. Church folk be used by God, but then they go out and be used by the devil. I'm not talking about you. That ain't holiness. Holiness is them that used by God even on the hell of phone. Y'all know what the hell of phone is? That folk who call you ain't got nothing good to say. They just gossip. They run people down. They That ain't holiness. That's wickedness. Are y'all right? I promise I'm not going to keep you long. This is it. The Lord disciplines those he loves. He loves. I tell parents, if you don't correct your children, you don't really love them. And he punish everyone he accept as a son. Uh, you ever been put on punishment? Mm. Tim threw his hand up real fast. Y'all, that means you had a good house. But any of y'all been put on punishment? I, I'm just talking about people like me. Any of y'all ever been put on punishment and mom and dad had to leave? Yeah. <laughs> and all day, you were walking around like you was humble in front of them, but in your heart you was anticipating the departure. And you just try to be real cool about it. You say, how long are you going to be the gone? Uh, I, I, I'm just asking you because I really want to clean up your room. <laughs> you ain't stunned the room. You stunned outside. But for some, no, no, that, that's for you Mickey Mouse folk. I'm finna take it to another level for, with us brothers from the hood. Have your parents ever parked the car and left the keys on the table and they took a nap? <laughs> they took a nap? And when they took a nap, you took a drive? Since, since he ain't here, he all the way in Atlanta, you know. I got cousin, I'ma just say S-H. <laughs> he took the car, came down the street, picked us up. We went all the way in the city from Walnut Park over by Bender Bender, Evans, Moore Luther King. But when he got back, Somebody had took the parking space. The parking space. Oh. <laughs> it ain't like you could just pick that car up, go knock on that door and say, hey, that's my... <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is, every time we try to go our own way, something always exposes But that's all right, that's all right. He's such a loving God that we all have missed it. We all have messed up. We all have missed the mark. That's what sin is. Sin like a man taking a boat and arrow and trying to hit the bullseye. They miss it. But guess what, y'all? What sin abound, grace do much more abound. I'm not trying to give you a license to do wrong. God brought grace to help us so we can do right. To help to help us through our trial, to help us through our situation, to help us through our heartache, to help us through our brokenness. Come on. He just trying to shape us oh my God. in shape. He want when he look at us and when others look at us that they see his son. 
Can I keep going? Yes, sir. Discipline is an act of love and pure gift to a child. Now every child, like, how is that a gift? You ain't got to keep that gift. What you give me for, Tim, come here, come here. Have Tim did anything this week, parents? He did? Okay. Can I be his daddy for one minute? Okay. He, he just had a birthday, right? Now, now can you imagine your dad uh, saying, Tim, I got your gift. Put your hand on that thing right there. <laughs> I seen that boy wrestle. I hear him and he put me in a headlock. Yeah, and man, y'all gonna run up here. But 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 Tim didn't want this for you rather have a jacket than this one. <laughs> but but thank you Tim. But that's many a time I believe that because his mother and daddy knew what was ahead of him, sometimes they had to correct him. It wasn't because they hated him, or we hated uh, our children, or our parents hated us. It's because they was loving us. They didn't want us to go down the path that they may have went down. I know what road I took, and I don't want you traveling on the same road. But can I help you, my parents? Nine times out of ten, if they continue to see us walk that road, they're going to take that road. So we got to give them another road. I'm talking to me now. It's not Tim parents or, or you. I'm talking to me. You can accept what God's saying if you want to. But I want to lead in a way that not only you say Bishop is a man of God, but he's a godly man. I don't want to be a pastor that leads you, then you find out he's a crook. He got a girlfriend on the side. He got a, that's not God. That's your flesh. So I say, God. I even woke up this morning saying, God, rest on me. God, correct me. God, strengthen me. God, use me. God, whoop me when I need a whooping. Why? Because I just want to be holy. I don't want to impress you, you, and especially you. But I want to walk humbly before my God. I want God to be able to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Then I want him to say, well please, when everybody else wouldn't stand. I had you standing for righteousness. I had you standing for holiness. Is anybody going down this road with me? I'm tired of doing it my way. Cause my way didn't get me no place. I, I want to go your way, God. My circumstances has drawn me to you. I found out the errors of my ways. I thank you for chastising me. I thank you for loving me. What I love about God. When God begin to correct you, he don't expose your mess to the whole world. The only time he exposed your mess would even tell you to come from your wicked ways get off of what you doing follow me in sincerity see God will correct us to ourselves but then when we don't listen God have to expose your stupidity but I'm so glad he's still loving on you cause he don't want your sins to take you to hell he wants you to walk in his righteousness I'm so glad I am the righteousness of God not by what I did but God a man called Jesus I paid the price on the cross and I'm so glad he took my sins and gave me his righteousness then he filled me with the Holy Ghost so now I ain't got no excuse cause I got power in the Holy Ghost have you ever seen a person 
that haven't been corrected, haven't been trained. Yeah. A menace to society. Somebody breaking your house, that your first name come up in your head. Amen. And so who God loves, even though you justify your stupidity, he loves you so much. He not letting your stuff work out because if it work out, you go farther from him. Right. I'm teaching better than y'all helping me today. I'm teaching better than y'all helping me. But he don't mean us wrong. Come on. He mean us right. Yep. Israel was his chosen people. Hebrews, he chose them. And when they obeyed him, he blessed them. But when they went doing their own thing, he let pagan uh, uh, heathen armies destroy and put them in bondage. He wasn't doing them wrong. If they keep going their own way, he knew eventually they would be destroyed. So he had to hook them with the Chaldeans. The Amalekites. Folk that didn't know God. He had to whoop them with them. Israel was the most powerful army. As long as they walked in the right way of God. But don't you know, you're going to always look across the road and something look better. I'm going to go there. I, I'm going to that church. Uh, I feel real comfortable and good when the preacher get through preaching. No, you, th that's the wrong church. You need to go somewhere that you hear God correcting your mess because God wants to make you better, not bitter. Our way makes us bitter. History demonstrates God's commitment to bless righteous generations and to discipline the rebellious until they turn back to God. Rebellious not, don't come from God. It's a demon. To rebel is to go your own way, do your own thing. No order. Hosea 14 and 9, who is wise? Who realized these things? Who is discerning? So I always try to discern other people. Why you don't discern your mess? <laughs> Do this, y'all. You got a jacket, open it up. If you don't, just act like you got one. Okay. Now look, look, look at your own chest. Look at the stuff in your own heart. Jesus said, why takes out the toothpick that's in your brother's eye and can't get the two by four out your own? Discern you. Examine your See, if we gave folks the same judgment we gave ourselves, we'll walk in mercy. My child sinned. Your child did the same thing. They, they made a mistake. Okay, let me say that again. My child did the same thing yours did, but they sinned. Yours made a mistake. Let's go deeper than that. You pop somebody in the nose. 
I hope y'all don't do this, okay? I'm just making a couple of illustrations, all right? You pop somebody in the nose, they deserve it. Two days later, somebody pop you in the nose, they did you wrong. But if you judge somebody else on the same thing you, you judge yourself on, then you show mercy. Jesus said, blessed is the merciful, for they shall obtain. Yes. You go run folks down, lie on folks, do that, and then when they come back to you, you can't handle it. You are a hurt. Look at your name. Say neighbor. Neighbor. If I can't say nothing good, I can't say nothing about good. somebody, somebody. I'ma shut my mouth. I'm a shut my mouth. Cause they got a whole list. They got a whole list. They can say on me. They can say on me. Oh my God! Don't nobody know you like you. Are y'all right? That's why the church is a beautiful thing. God deal with us. He pour out our stuff. But then he tell you, baby, I'll wash and clean that stuff yeah. up. And then your job ain't to go out down with nobody judging. Because <laughs> you two toe up. Talk to yourself. Self. 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 I say self. I say self. The problem is when self start answering itself. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Examine yourself and see whether you in the faith. The Bible says, who is he that shall see low life and see good day? He that keep his mouth from speaking on somebody else. Every time you put your mouth on people, you 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 diminishing the little anointing you got. Cause I told y'all, y'all anointing ain't powerful till it work at home. Right? Still let him use you wherever, on the job, wherever, wherever. But don't overlook stuff in your house. Right. Amen. Once you keep them children, you can't make their decision. Don't let them take you to an early grade. You work on you and your spouse relationship, and you grow so when people see it, they can see God. Because God said this, the church is my bride. Love your bride as Christ loved the church. Woman, don't lead him. Obey him in all things. Now, he, he ain't my daddy. He sure ain't. I told first lady one day, I said, look, 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 look. I told her, when somebody play first lady, get, get up so I can tell you what I told her. Somebody get in the middle of the hour. Act like you first lady. I told her one day, I said, first lady, let me tell you this. You ain't Johnny May. You ain't my mama. Oh. You know what she told me? She said, I sure ain't, because I'll be whooping your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be whooping your tail right now. <laughs> God, that was humbling. <laughs> See, God, I'm a real man. But that was very humbling. I'm going to close this out. Watch this. It says, He will understand them. The ways of the Lord are right. And the righteous walk in them. But the rebellious stumble in them. You want the blessings of the Lord, but they ain't coming till he deliver you from rebellious. He can't bless that mess. It wasn't until we got on one accord that we start seeing the blessings of God. As long as we was trying to compete, still complete each other, we weren't walking in the blessings.
See, the devil and the world, they thrive on rebellion. That ain't from God. Right. New Testament concept of discipline parallels the Old Testament. To discipline is to instruct, train, yes. and guide for development. Let me tell you, there's some renegades in the body of Christ. And they'll tell you, oh, oh, them pastors, they just want to sit on you. Can't nobody sit on you to harm you. God said, I have much people in this city, Paul. No man can sit on you. But that's that rebellious, wild spirit that's in the body of Christ. <coughs> but watch the powerful ones that he raised up in this season. They were somebody who sat and got instructed. Somebody got trained. And got, got, well, I got all of that. No, you ain't got it for the next level. That's why you where you at. That's why you still whooshing. When you whoosh, that means you ain't got it. I wish I could have this. That means you have a lack of it. Instruction is for your good. So when you get there, he can keep you there. Right. Right. Are y'all right? Yes. Yes. Hebrews 12, start at verse uh, uh, 4, David. I just got uh, uh, nine minutes, David. Amen. Man, I got some points I want to give you all. Uh, uh, you there, David? Yes, sir. Go. Ye have not resisted unto blood, uh -huh. striving against sin. You got to strive against sin. Read. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, uh -huh. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Yes. For, who, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Let me tell you something. Read that verse again, David. For whom the Lord loveth, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. He chasteneth. He chasteneth. It. Meaning, he spanked, he corrects, he instructs. He really love on you. Watch this. Read. And scourgeth everyone, every son whom he received. Uh huh. If ye endure chastening, you got to endure. Let me tell you something. When, when you can, when you go through different things and God making you and chastening you, that don't feel good. Just like your daddy belt didn't feel good. But boy, it would turn off for your good. Yeah. Watch this read. God dealeth with you as with sons. He ain't dealing with you like you some heathen on the street. He dealing with you as his son. How many want the best for their children? Yeah. That's why you discipline. That's why you train them. Read. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? If you got... Uh, uh, if God got somebody that he don't chase them, them ain't his children. Them his creation. That's the difference between a son and somebody he created. I says, really? But if ye be without chastise, if you be without chastise, how do he usually uh, chasten you? And instruct you through the Holy Spirit, through situations, through spiritual leaders. He always got something or somebody. I don't say something. I'm saying because the Holy Ghost is a He, the Spirit of Truth. Why you could be so obedient? You say to a spirit that you can't see and you don't obey spiritual authority. That's because you don't obey the spirit of God. Because when you obey the spirit of God, you have no problem with spiritual authority. Oh, y'all missed that. Read. But if ye be without chastisement, but if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, uh -huh. then are ye bastards and not sons. Mm. 
Only thing you have to do, look around the body of Christ. There's a lot of anointed bastards. And so you, 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 you're excited about people who's anointed, but King Cyrus was anointed by God, but he was a heathen. So because God anointed, don't mean it's heathens. But when he give you the Holy Ghost and put it on the inside, he's saying, you're mine. Yep. You've been sealed to the day of redemption, but then you got to continue in my holiness. Come on. Because he said, Paul said in Romans 8 chapter, who you yield your members to obey, that's who you really serve. Oh, oh, okay. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to take this message a whole different way because you're looking at me real funny. So I got to show you something. Right. Go to Corinthians. Let me see. This wasn't even in my notes. Are y'all right? Yes. Still love Jesus? Yes. We're going to go. I just got four minutes. Somebody come take Corinthians out my Bible. <laughs> Go to 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. I believe that's what I'm looking for. Are you there, David? Yes, sir. Go, uh, start at verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. God said, I am jealous over you, my children, with godly jealousy. Don't mean he in me. He means, listen, I'm so protective of you because I love you. He said, I'm protective of you because I love you. Yeah. Not that jealousy that you envy is and want to hurt somebody. He said, I'm jealous over you because I want to protect you, my children. Watch this read. For I have espoused you to one husband. I espoused you to one husband. Read. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. In other words, I don't want to be your husband and the devil your husband. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Read. But I fear, but I fear, lest by any means, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, as that ugly, cross-eyed, bow-legged <laughs> devil. Is that what your Bible said? <laughs> no, because he ain't cross-eyed or bow-legged. He a spirit. Yeah. As he beguiled me to see Eve through his slickness, really, so your mind, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Let me tell you something. A person who saved when their mind get defiled, they worse than a sinner. And some believers, the enemy use their head like a like a garbage can. Hey, why would you say that? It's in their heart. What's in the heart gonna proceed out the mouth. Yeah. But they won't look and examine themselves. That came out of you. Them lies came out of you. That backbiting came out of you. That deceit came out of you. Get a troll, control of you. Stop blaming others. It's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of. And so you, God can never take you to the next level because you won't let him deal with you. Right. Are y'all right? Yes. So your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. Really? For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, if they preach another Jesus whom we have not preached, uh -huh. Or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, 
Oh, okay. another. Let, let me tell you how y'all impressed with people and the reason I'm not impressed with folks. I'm impressed with God. God uses people. But then after he used people, if they don't stay yielded to him, that people is operating off their gifts, but they have no character, they backbiters, they gossip, they got demons, and you're impressed with demons. I'm not. My job is to cast demons out. Not to counsel demons, but to cast them out. Are y'all ready? Watch this, watch this. See, because you, you run around and all these renegades, and you run like a renegade, and then you ask, where's your pastor? In your heart, you know you ain't got one because you ain't submitted to nobody. Now look at this 12th verse. Are y'all right? Man, y'all was loving me at first. Y'all right? Why y'all don't love me when I tell you the truth? Look at the 12th verse. Look at the 11th verse. Look at the 10th verse. 10, 11. Read, wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. Mm. Read, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Uh-huh, watch this. For such are false apostles. False apostles. Read, deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Yeah. Transforming them. Transforming themselves into the apostles of into Christ. Into the apostles of Christ. That's so you bragging now, but they led by demons. Read oh himself no is transformed is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, 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 I, I'm really fathering you, and then you run and you dog for. You led by a demon. But watch this. I'm killing the devil. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. But nobody won't tell you that's why God keeps drawing you here because I deal with your stuff. I want you delivered so the true God can use you. Are y'all right? Watch this. Watch this. Read. Therefore, it is no great thing. It Therefore, if Satan transformed himself into an angel life, Therefore, it is no great thing if he what? His ministers if, also. If his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who he shall be according to their works. Let me tell you, the devil got some preacher. That's why we ain't impressed. Amen. We know God, we know Satan. Because when God uses somebody, he stand back and get the glory, and they walk real low. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hodges. Did I get y'all's last name right? Uh, Tim Perns. What's y'all's last name? Has the, uh, I'm preaching better than they helping me today. Are y'all praying for me back there? Ain't no use to come to a church where a pastor ain't a person of God and they going to feed you stuff that you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because God loves us. And when he come back, he don't want us to be fighting no devil. So you need a man of God that ain't scared of you. Love you enough like a parent love their children and gonna tell you truth. But when he get through telling you truth, he got to walk in truth. But guess what, baby? I've been walking this a long time. I love walking in truth. The benefits is so good. The benefits are so good. Yeah. I say the benefits are so good. Yeah. I say the benefits are so good. Listen, when you go fill out an application for the job, first you, you won't know how much I'm going to pay. Right? Huh? That, you don't hear about the benefit. Uh, what's the pay? What them duckies going to be coming on that check? <laughs> then, you know it don't mean nothing if duckies, duck money. <laughs> 
feel like Porky Pig taking a bath in a shower. I'm trying to say bad too, but it would come up when you say the shower. Y'all get that on your way home. But, <laughs> listen, because you know after that check, you need some health insurance. Because if you don't have health insurance, that check is going to be taken all the time, even if you get a cold. Now they got this thing, now you can't see your doctor, you see, uh, I won't see them. I keep giving you my co-payments, I want to see doc. What doc at? What the one who went eight years or more in college? That's why I'm paying my co-payment for. But I want to get to the point I don't have to see Doc so much. I want to walk in the divine health. Divine wealth. I ain't got to call you talk about wrong me nothing. I want to be the linen and not the boy. I want to be the You kind of been the tail. I want to be the not the tail. Yeah. Then the Bible said, I want to be above only. Oh, yeah. And not be me. Yeah. I should have stayed like that when I was broke. I ain't broke no more. Yeah. That don't break me. No, you think I'm glad that I'm telling you, when you walk in the blessings of God, gotta make sure that you won't be the bar but you'll be the lender. Yeah. I just had to realize who I was. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you something. Once you realize who is your daddy, yeah. you won't get depressed about everything. So what, $2,800? If you ain't got it in the bank, God got it. Yeah. Now, I don't know how you going to give it to me, but I know you're going to do it. I've never seen a righteous Forsaken. No, they're seen. They can breathe. Now don't be coming to me talking about this and loan me this and loan me that. I teach too good for you to come to me. You apply what I'm teaching, you'll never have to come to nobody talking about loan me. But if you don't apply the teaching, you're supposed to be broke. Look at your name, say you're supposed to be broke. You're supposed to be broke. You don't apply what I'm teaching, you're supposed to be broke. You don't apply what I'm you're supposed, you're supposed, supposed to be broke. I gotta be careful, there's a couple of teachers and principals in here. Let, let me straighten up my vocabulary. <laughs> I'm a doing all right, principal. You don't care if I say D D D. Long as that anointing on it, though. My God from glory. Uh, we we had uh, principal. I wish y'all was in this marriage retreat. Somebody asked a question. Says uh, uh, about degrees. Let me tell you something. College is good. Get all you can and can all you get. But don't think success because you go to college. There's some folk they got degrees on top of degrees and don't have a job. Yep. Now, now take a degree with God in front of it called doors to come open for yeah. you. Yeah, hallelujah. Y'all right? Uh, time up. When was somebody going to tell me? I, I told some, huh? Huh? No, no, no. I, I instructed them up there. Y'all let me know when my time up, okay? <laughs> Get a lot of hand clap. I even apologize about last Wednesday. When 8.30 come, I'm closing Bible class. I don't care what else I got to say. Let me tell you something. Our Bible class looks like this. And so, why would I go over time and then start losing people that really want to hear God. I'm just going to have to close out so they can know 7 Bible class start, 8.30 is over. Then I won't be lying. I'll be walking in integrity. Yep. Then you don't want to come back. 
You want me to tell me, oh my God, I want to go to Bible class, but I know Bishy going to have me sit there and touch <laughs> and, and that ain't right, because guess what? My sister called me with her, you know, my sister called me the next day, uh, well, you know what? Uh, you probably sleep, uh, we, we getting up for work. <laughs> Yeah, you bitch. I forgot what I told her. But I'm sure I told her something. <laughs> you understand? She the one, she the one to say, let's get that clock. See, God always has somebody in your life that correct you. Okay? She said, let's get that clock. So I've been paying attention to the clock for a while, D. I'm not, I'm trying to let her know. No, I haven't tried to let her know nothing. I just got to learn how to cut off. Because you know why? God's going to take us to TV. Amen. And, 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 and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're going to go to TV. And the TV don't tell how much you got to say. Y'all ever listen to my broadcast? I've been on the radio 14 years. When that 30 minutes is over, I don't care what I say, the principal, they say, boom. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I say, yeah. Get a lot of hand clap. They don't care. Listen here, everyone standing, you heard the voice of God. And you got to make a public stand. To let the devil know, I'm coming to join this church because I believe this the church. First of all, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Then I believe this my church. And I'm coming because this man of God and this ministry is going to speak to what I need to go to the next level in my life. If that's you, come.